I'm like, well, get me out. I want to go talk to people. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, too. All right. We'll take a couple questions about the governor's visit here today. Governor, uh, talk a little bit about this program. You know, this is the first one in the state that's happened here in Genesee County, uh, giving these folks a second chance on board. I think it's incredibly important. You know, we know that this is an opportunity to give people a chance to make a good living, to get back in the workforce, to take care of their families, a second chance of, at you know, a real good life here in Michigan. And this is a coordinated effort with the Attorney General, Secretary of State, my office, the Sheriff. I mean, this is everyone coming together to make sure people have an opportunity to get vaccinated, register to vote and get their records expunged. I mean, what a great day. You mentioned vaccinations here, but the House is supposed to vote on vaccine passports. I mean, um, I'm not familiar with all the details of the bill, but is that a bill that you can pass as soon as I think it's like that? <laughs> you know, the legislature has a tendency to spend a lot of time and taxpayer money on things that aren't really being debated. Uh, there's not ever been a conversation around requiring vaccine passports. So the fact that they spent this much time and energy on it when there are billions of dollars from the federal government that haven't yet been deployed to help our kids in school or help small businesses that are struggling. Um, I just kind of scratched my head at why they're spending all this time and energy on that. We got real important issues and you talk to anyone here or across our state, they're not worried about vaccine passports. They're worried about getting back, back to work and being able to take care of their families. What are you hearing this morning after the first night of the relaxed restrictions in the restaurants and bars and whatnot? And, and also, um, any chance that the July 1st date will move up based on the success you're seeing right now? Well, I think people are feeling relieved, right? This, it's summer. The weather's getting warmer. We're getting outside more. We can drop a lot of the protocols. I, as much as anyone, want to drop the, the last protocol, but we're two days in. We've always said we got to treat with this virus like a dial, not an on and off switch. That's how it comes roaring back. And so this is the last turn of the dial and we'll get to G July 1st and we'll be able to drop protocols. And every day we're making progress and there's reason to feel better every single day about where we're at. You know, at this juncture, we're two days in, so it's way too early to, to assess that. But I think we're going to see a lot of progress, people getting back to normal and getting back in the workforce, and that's good for all of us. Well, I, you know, I've, I've, I've learned we're going to always lead with the data and follow the science, um, and we are getting smarter every day with a virus that was a novel one that we didn't know a whole lot about 15 months ago. So um, I never say no, but acknowledge we got to follow the data and the science. All right, we'll take just a couple more questions. Actually, the LG will be over in a second if anybody wants to talk to them. The <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks, everyone. Glad you're here, everybody. Can I go walk in the yard? Do you want to bring the LG over? I'm happy to do that if you want to talk. Okay. Tank, 
We have music and dancing. And in addition to people being able to get their records expunged, we also offer vaccinations and the opportunity to register to vote because the Secretary of State will be doing that. So honestly, I couldn't be more thrilled to be here in Genesee County today. Couldn't be more thrilled with the amazing work uh, of Sheriff Swanson and the opportunity to partner with him. And we are hoping to get as many people uh, here today to take advantage of those new laws and to get their records expunged. We're going to actually be handing out pre-processed expungements because the marijuana laws permit for that. Fortunately, Prosecutor David Layton uh, assisted us with that. There's a 60-day period that the uh, prosecutor has an opportunity to object to those. He's waived those 60 days, which means that we're going to be passing out pre-processed expungements. They're already done. Uh, and we're going to be able to do that for dozens and dozens of people. And many hundreds more, up to a thousand people, are going to have the opportunity to get their paperwork processed. We've already done a lot of the legwork for them. And they'll come here today, they'll sign off on the forms, and we'll get them submitted to court, hopefully get them a court date, and hopefully for, for up to a thousand people, get their records expunged under the new law. So we're very, very excited for all of those things to happen. I will tell you, um, there's going to be a little bit uh, of the downside of the day will be that uh, Sheriff Swanson uh, has challenged me to a dance-off, and I'm a terrible dancer. So, uh, you know, just putting everybody on notice that that may happen. Uh, I don't know what my political uh, career has to do for, but it's all going to go downhill after the movie dance. So that's going to be the troubling part. But other than that, it's going to be amazing. I will say this, too. I'm getting in that gun tank later today. And what we're going to do is for everybody who gets vaccinated, you can have a shot at the AG of the gun tank. That means you, Mike Shirky, Mike Shirky, you want to come out here and get vaccinated, you legit will get a shot in the gun tank. So that is the proposition that I make because I think it's so incredibly important that each and every person take advantage of the opportunity to get vaccinated to keep themselves safe and their families safe. Thank you, everybody. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist coming up next. I'm Gary from the Governor's Office. One second.
it's really critical. You know, during the pandemic, we were reminded of how deep racial disparities are in health outcomes. And we recognize that some of that has to do with the fact that, you know, there's bias and stuff in the And that presents an opportunity for us to make sure that our medical professionals are aware of that bias. It's the first step to live with it and equipping them with the tools to respond to it. And so uh, this training will make the practice of medicine better and stronger in the state of Michigan. And we're eager to have our students be an action that we have to
Good thing you guys got a new news director. Oh, yeah. You'll love her. She good? I love her. Everything I've read has been pretty good. Huh? Everything I've read about her has been pretty good. Yeah. So. Oh, I love her. We, I cried when she left. because oh my god <laughs> <I'm talking laughs> <down. laughs> plus it makes me look taller I went out stealing <laughs> oh yeah I got backwards and I got that one little spot and I was like oh son of a gun oh. that's terrible we're a little behind as usual elected officials how dare they right. then they have a lieutenant governor yeah. and Secretary of State. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Isn't it a great day to be in Tennessee County? Yes. How about the line? Give it up for the line out there, Randy. For two hours, we're being taken, I promise you. Thank you so much. Today marks a day in history where the lives of 718 people will be set free, dignity restored, family trees changed forever. We have so many people behind the scenes that have made this happen. So much planning for months and months and years and years. Many hands and feet to get to where we are. But it is an honor as the Sheriff of Genesee County to host it on the front lawn of a correctional facility and on the front lawn setting people free. That's what we're doing right now, today. You know, there's a lot of people that deserve recognition, but there's one that I'm gonna say deserves special recognition, personal recognition. When I was appointed sheriff in 2019, I had a list of to-dos. And in February of 2020, 
I was graced with the opportunity to go meet my attorney general. I made an appointment in Detroit, and I sat down at a conference table, and I met Dana Nessel. And I knew from a very, very close friend of ours, Dave Dwyer, what her heart was, what kind of person she was, and that to me means more than anything. You can't duplicate this by forcing it. Love's got to come from within, and I saw that in you. And then I was entrusted to work with the Solicitor General for the Flint water case, where Flint wasn't forgotten by our Attorney General. The promise to take care of Flint has always been on the front lines of her and her administration. We've seen it. And then in February of this year, on a Zoom call in the office, she dropped a hint. Sheriff, you know, we're looking for venues to host the first expungement fair. It wasn't even final. And I said, what is it going to take? And she had three things. A duct tape, cotton candy, and Justin Timberlake. I said, this is where you have it. Right here, on this day, June 2nd, 2021. Give it up for Michigan's Attorney General, Dana Nessel. Day one. 
In addition to expungement, we've made progress on the task force on jail and pretrial incarceration that was shared by the Lieutenant Governor and our Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice Bridget McCormick. I signed a bipartisan bill reforming civil asset forfeiture. And I signed raise the age legislation. That is a bill package to increase the age of who's legally considered a juvenile or an adult in the criminal justice system from 17 to 18. Now there's a lot more work to be done and we will not take our foot off the gas. But today is a testament so when we work together, we can make Michigan a place where there's opportunity for everyone. So today is about second chances. Today is about unity and coming together. Thank you as I walk that line and talk to folks. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And thank you for doing what you do. We're going to make this a huge success. And then the sheriff of Wayne County is going to have to replicate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Qualify 
for an expungement. Increase the number of set asides that an person can receive and reduce the waiting periods for people before people are eligible to even make that request. That means that more soon you will have a bigger and better and brighter chance at full civic life. A fair chance, a second chance to get a new job, a second chance to save affordable housing, a second chance to get an education, a second chance to get a loan, a second chance to start a business, a fair chance to access the expanded opportunities and bright future. And I'm so honored to be here with you to recognize that. The final element of making this real because we're not done with the reform, is that we have to go further. We need to actually continue to fund and automate this process to where we need to have fairs like this. In our state budget recommendation, we put forward $21 million to make that automation real. So when you're eligible, the offenses just fall away. You don't need to come to something like this. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need to make a phone call. It just happens for you. We've also continued to work on performing our, our jail system, as the governor referred to. We reviewed system through our jail task force last year. We made recommendations, and we signed in the legislation the governor did in January. Laws that reform sentencing guidelines, laws that reduce arrests, laws that will shorten the time that people will ever spend in contact with the justice system in the first place. And I work to continue the partnership of everyone here represented to make sure this can be real. We know that generations of disparities have stood between people in progress in Michigan. This generation, our generation, is going to be the generation that ends that reality in Michigan. We will continue to stand tall for Michiganders who are standing up for their rights and need someone in their corner. Everyone here represented is in that corner working with and fighting for you. So with that, I thank you for allowing me to be here and to serve alongside you. And I want to hand it back to Sheriff Swanson to do some more for the first Well, I think it's important to recognize probably the most popular person on the stage, and that is Bethany. Yeah. 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 Just like the volunteers that you see in colored shirts out there, you see maroon, you see lime, you see all sorts. So our volunteers, thank you for making this happen. I appreciate it so much. And I get the privilege now to introduce our Secretary of State, a Harvard grad. Somebody who loves family so much. One of the founding members of Military Spouses of Michigan. And one character that I really, really love and, and, and endure, and that is the fact she's a marathon. You know, 1% of the world's population can run 26.2 miles. But she's done it multiple times just in the Boston Marathon, which is a qualifier. As a four-time Ironman finisher, I have great respect for that. So if you think you can outrun her, good luck. Welcome, Secretary of State Benson. Well, let's give it up to our chair, Sheriff Swanson. What an incredible leader you are, both in Flint and around the state. And I, you know, I, I really also want to thank uh, a great leader here in Flint, Mayor Neely, Representative Neely. The two of you have done so much for the city, for this region. Thank you for being here today and being a part of this great event. Uh, and, you know, as I look out at everyone here today, I just want to thank you all for being here. Every single one of you who is going to be coming throughout today, the nearly 1,000 individuals who are coming for a clean slate, thanks to the leadership of our sheriff and our great attorney general. Thank you for being here. Know that we are here to serve you. We work for you. That's why we're here today. And I'm here also saying I don't want anyone in that line who's not registered to vote and is an eligible citizen. Don't leave without getting registered to vote because your voice matters. Your vote matters. And here in Flint and all across the state, we're going to work every day to make sure your voices are heard. But democracy is a team sport. We need you working with us. We need your voices at the table, too. And so when you register to vote, and by the way, make sure everyone knows and we spread the word, just because you have a criminal conviction or anything in your past with regards to the law, doesn't affect your voting rights at all. You can still vote. You still have access to that fundamental right, your right to vote. 
And you may think it doesn't matter, or my one vote doesn't count, but, but not only do we have elections decided by just a few votes every year, what we see right now in this state and in this country is an effort to make it harder for people to access their vote, harder for their voices to be heard, that they can make decisions that aren't necessarily in service to you. We want to serve you, but we can only do that, and we will do that, when you're able to participate too. So we're gonna fight to make sure that your voices are heard. And when you register to vote and get engaged as a citizen in the state, we can work harder and fight harder alongside you to make sure that every single person has a chance to succeed, has access to quality health care, has a safe community to grow up in and live in, free of violence and, and with full access to education and jobs. And that's what we're fighting every day for. And that's what today's a celebration of. So we're here today to celebrate you. But it's a new day for democracy in Michigan. And it's a day in which we all can work together to ensure every voice is heard, everyone has a seat at the table. And I know you here in Flint know just how important it is that your voices are heard, not just here in this community, but all the way in Lansing and in Washington, D.C. And that's why we've also got your great Congressman Dan Kilby here as well, who's representing you every day in Washington. So get registered to vote. Get vaccinated. That's here too. Our great Attorney General has worked extensively to provide all of these services. And now I want to bring her up again. But join me in, in recognizing her extraordinary leadership and bringing government to the people, which is part of what we all work to do every day. But here today, we see it firsthand, and all of you individually, your lives will be changed as a result of her leadership, and we're all proud to stand with her. Attorney General Dana Messler. Okay, admittedly, I cannot run 26 miles, uh, but I did once watch Netflix for 26 hours straight. Uh, so we're waiting to see what that qualifies me for. All right, now at this time, let's bring up our uh, congressman from the 5th Congressional District representing us here in Genesee County, Dan Kilby. Thank you, uh, Dana, and thank you all for what you're doing to make today real. Um, you know, this is my hometown. Mm -hmm. I love Flint. There's one of the characteristics of the people of Flint is that we have a long history of seeking justice. Justice for people who've been overlooked. Justice for people who in one case were poisoned under a previous administration by their own government. Justice comes in lots of forms. And when we have an attorney general who's willing to seek justice in every form, a governor who's willing to seek justice for all of us, a secretary of state who has made it not just her life, her life's work, but her obsession to make sure justice comes in the form of everyone having their voice heard in our democracy. The lieutenant governor who's lived that, and local officials like the sheriff, Sheriff Swanson, and Prosecutor Layton, who put the word justice back into the criminal justice system. This is an important day for us, and it's right that it's happening here in Flint. We're trying to do what we can at the federal level. We passed the First Step Act, which is only the first step in reforming the federal justice system. But when I see efforts like what we have today, and the work particularly of the sheriff with the Ignite program, to help educate people in the jail so that they're more prepared to re-enter society when they leave the jail, and then this. This day is really important because justice comes in many forms. It comes in the form of holding people accountable, for sure, for the mistakes they may have made in their life. But it also comes in the form, justice comes in the form of ultimately making it right. And one of the ways we make it right is to give people a chance to move on. Look, the folks who are lined up here today are here because they've acknowledged the mis a mistake in their past and are ready to fully contribute everything they have, everything they can, to the goodness of our society. That's why they are lined up. But let's be clear about one thing. While this is important to the people who will benefit from this expungement fair and have their records cleared, 
It's important to all of us. We measure the goodness of society by how we interact with one another, live with one another, and benefit from one another. We are a better people, every one of us, because what is happening today. We are better for it, our society is better for it, and we owe a huge debt of gratitude to those who made it today possible. Let me, uh, let me know very well, I believe, our prosecutor, David Lane, the person that I have just become familiar with, we met 44 years ago. Uh, he's doing a great job and represents all of the values that today is based upon. Prosecutor David Lane. Good morning, everybody. I've long believed that Michigan's expungement laws were too restrictive and needed expansion. And I believe that because so many people who come through the criminal justice system and end up with convictions are not criminals. They're just human beings who made a mistake in life. And so over the past number of years that I've been in office, privileged to be in office, we've worked with our legislative representatives to get the law changed to allow more folks to be eligible for expungement. Early on in this process, I spoke with the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, and I want to congratulate the Attorney General and the Governor for getting this done, because this has been in the works for a long time, and it wasn't easy to get this legislation through and onto the Governor's desk. Also, a shout out to my colleagues across the state, the Prosecuting Attorneys Association, of Michigan to work with the stakeholders on this bill to support its passage. Finally, I brought my pen along this morning because I'm ready to sign those 60-day waivers so eligible applicants can have their convictions expunged and get a clean slate. And having said that, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker, my dear friend, the mayor of the great city of Flint, Sheldon Neely. Good morning. We bless the Mount of God in all of this. All this great work, all these efforts, these resources coming together, it's through the grace of God that we're here today. My motto when I got elected, I talked about prayer, planning, and partnership. Prayer, planning, and partnership. We pray for this day. All of you pray for this day. We plan for this day. And we partner for this day. I want to thank my friend Dana Nessa, Sheriff Swanson, the Governor, State Representative Cynthia Neely. It was all about partnership in order to get this done even today. A second chance, a second chance. You should never be defined by one mistake for the rest of your life. We all say a pledge of allegiance to our flag. It ends like this, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, all in this country. So we have to stand together today and be grateful for the partnership, for the planning, and the prayer that went into this. So congratulations to all of you for your new second chance at this. And let's do this thing together in prayer. God bless. All right, we're almost done. We're about to bring up the closer. David Nessel, just like in the ninth inning, when you're down by the one, it's a full count, we want the best closer. But before that, I want to recognize John L. Percy and Emma Bond, the county ambassadors that represent returning citizens around the state of Michigan. This is a day long coming. And the word that I walk away with today is validation. Validation is restoring worth individuals, to restore courage. Our Ignite program in the jail, countless testimonies of people sitting trying to get their 6th, 7th, 8th grade education in a protected environment. You see tears running down their faces at FEMA housing. A 35-year-old female inmate was learning to read. And she said to the congressman, I never thought it would happen. 
I'm a single mom. I have courage to go out and get a job now. And for all those that have been waiting for the last two hours and wave one of expungement that's now wrapped around the building, Genesee County is not the only county. We're not the only place you'll be set free. There's 82 counties in the state of Michigan, and this team is coming to set people free. And the closer is going to be the one to do that. So as we do this, I want a heartfelt, tag slapping, shake your partner on the shoulder, greeting for Attorney General. She loves the attention. And my dance party, my dance party colleague, Attorney General Dan Nessa. Let's start getting people's records.